Hey, uh, my name is Bill Dishinger. I'm an orthodontist uh, outside of Portland, Oregon in a little town called Lake Oswego. I've been in practice for almost 21 years now. This is my 21st year, crazy year to, to, to be celebrating that 20th plus year. Uh, my father was an orthodontist as well. Uh, I uh, practiced with him for about six or seven years and then he retired and I've been running the practice since. Uh, I graduated. Your father from, was Terry Dishinger, right? Father was Terry Dishinger, the one and only. Yes. And the, uh, the leader of the Herbst Appliance? He was, uh, yep, yeah, big, big Herbst guy. Traveled all over the world teaching people how to use the Herbst. Um, if you don't know, he was an NBA basketball player before being an orthodontist. Wow. Uh, played in the 1960 Olympics, won a gold medal. He was Rookie of the Year. Um, so he's, he's a pretty, pretty accomplished guy. We, our, my kids call him Forrest Gump, all the different things he did in life. So he was pretty <laughs> remarkable. That's a pretty great title, actually, because um, being able to be an Olympian and an NBA player and an orthodontist is each one of them are a lifetime achievement. And he imagined yeah. three of them at the same time. Yep. Yeah. 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 My kids make fun of me. Like what happened to you? <laughs> like, what? come on. Oh, you only made it to doctor. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, totally worthless. Thanks kids. I feel great. Not, great, not, great. not even a, not even a real doctor. So. That's right. Yeah. You just, you just move teeth, dad. Yeah. So um, speaking of your family, how is everybody doing? Health, I hope, I hope everybody's healthy, happy, all that stuff. Are you, is everything okay at home during this crazy time? Yeah, yeah, health is all good. Uh, as far as we know, none of us have, uh, have had COVID, but you know, there's a lot of people that are asymptomatic that have it, so we might be curious, uh, who, who knows, but uh, we haven't been tested. Uh, but yeah, the health has been great. Um, you know, as, as difficult a time as this has been, uh, from a family perspective, it's, it's been awesome. So our older son, who's normally down in Los Angeles in college has been home for a few months already. And um, so it's nice to have him home and uh, you know, he definitely misses college, but he's, uh, he enjoys being with, with family and uh, the, the time that we've been able to spend together has really been a special time. It's going to be interesting to see how our kids look back on this time. Um, you know, I, all of us that are, that are working or not working or you know, trying to work or whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, it's going to be looked back as a difficult time, uh, especially economically and moving forward. We'll probably be in a recession for a little while. Uh, our kids, though, perspective might be a lot different, especially the ones that are, that are, that are quite younger. Uh, looking back on how much time they spent with mom and dad during this time um, and some of the fun things they did at home. So it's going to be really interesting to see down years down the road how they, how they view it and uh, compared to us. I, I think they're going to view it as kind of a special time. Yeah, actually. I mean, I know I know that uh, I'm enjoying the time with my family uh, as much as I can, and it's one of those times where I'm beginning to learn more about my kids, and so it's it's awesome that you're getting to share that, and your kids are growing and being healthy, and um, I think I'll look back on this the same way with the positive thing. But I I think you're what you have is a remarkable point is that this is a huge landmark event for them and their lives, and as well as in for ours, and um, it's going to change the way we do everything i think i mean it seems incredibly impactful in our daily life yeah so yeah. what are you doing to manage your sanity along this time yeah. uh fortunately our golf course is open here in town oh. um so they have the, the cups are raised above the ground so you don't reach into a cup to pick it up uh, there's no rakes and stuff so there's basically no cross touching of, of things but we're able to get out with our buddies and with family and play golf so that's been really nice um, our family are total Disney nerds, so we started watching the Disney animation, like the, all of them started at Snow White, and we're working our way through it, um, which is a little, a little rough. Some of those early ones are a little, a little slow, and uh, they definitely Disney got better as time went on with their, uh -huh. with their movies. Uh, but so we've been doing that as a family, playing games as a family. Uh, we have two dogs, so we, we take the dogs on about an hour-long walk every, every day, and um, that's kind of... I've been going to the office every day, just, you know, helping with, with how we're scheduling people, what we're planning on, working on projects. And then we have repair patients that come in that, that have stuff broken that we're fixing up. Um, so I'm in the office from about 10 o'clock to three o'clock, uh, most days, uh, about three or four days a week. By the time I get home, uh, my wife, uh, we've realized we are, we are not cut out to be homeschoolers. And uh, by the time I get home, my wife's okay. like, all right, we got to get on the walk. I'm about ready to kill somebody. Um, uh -huh. so, uh -huh. Yeah, but that's how we're getting those walks in right when I get home. It's helping her sanity. So. Yeah, uh, I'm wearing the Mr. Mom apron lately. And, and um, 
I have a lot more appreciation for our, our public school teachers right now, that's for sure. Oh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, uh, all right, so uh, here's a fair question. Be honest, when was the last time you showered and shaved? You know, every, every, Sunday, uh, every Sunday I shave, um, my wife does not like me in a beard, otherwise I would be fully bearded out like you right now. But um, my wife does not like me in a beard, unfortunately. So every Sunday I shave. So I'm shaving once a week, which I feel is quite, quite a feat given what's going on. Yes. Um, and I shower almost every day. I, I, I don't like being smelly, so, uh, so I'm a regular shower guy. For you. I just for you. I, I actually showered and shaved today, just because I hey, wanted to present. That's it. nice, nice. Thank you, thank yeah. you. Uh, but I, I'll be. Can't say I dress too nicely. I, this is kind of my normal dress up here, wearing some sort of a sweatshirt. So I got my Star Wars sweatshirt for a lot. Dig the Star, Star Wars. Wars. Yeah, Star Wars nerd too. I'm just flat out a nerd. So I, I dig it a lot. Um, all right. So I mean, here's the complicated. Here's the hard questions that I think everybody really wants to know. And. Um, you know, dental practices all over the country are being closed down of their governor, city, county, you know, whatever, to the government re response to coronavirus. Um, I know Oregon is supposed to be shut down until June 15th. And um, <clears throat> do you see any changes in that? Do you uh, think it'll actually go that far? Do you hope it'll, I mean, well, I know you hope, but do you think it may end up a little earlier? What's your opinion? Yeah, I think it's going to be earlier. Um, you know, when she first, when she she, the, our governor, doctor, doctor, she's not doctor, uh, Governor Kate Brown uh, shut us all down. It was for personal protection equipment preservation, basically. It was for the uh -huh. mask, mostly the mask, uh, but some with the gloves, but mostly the mask to make sure they didn't run out of those in the hospital. We've hardly had any cases in Oregon. She shut us down pretty early. Uh, I'll give her credit. Uh, she was really on top of it a lot more than other states were. Uh, when it first came down, obviously it was pretty frustrating, but looking back on it, uh, she really made a good decision for our state. So we're looking really, really good as far as the numbers. Um, I think the coalition that they're setting up with multiple states kind of working together to figure things out, actually it's going to help Oregon because, yeah, we were June 15th, which is by far the latest of any state I've heard of. Uh, I think Washington was May 18th and California was around May 1st or so if they even had a date. I think uh, California is kind of making up as they go, last I heard. Um, so I think we, we will be earlier. She had a press conference this week uh, on April 14th and she mentioned dentistry in there as one of the fields along with um, uh, like hairdressers and different things like that that she felt uh, with the way that it's kind of one-on-one -on -one contact and especially in dentistry, the way we are, I mean, our, our OSHA stuff is already standardized anyways. We're a very safe place to be. Mm -hmm. uh, so we intimated that we might be open up earlier than some other businesses. So yeah, we're anticipating somewhere in May, um, but planning for June 1st is kind of what we're planning for, hoping for May though. Yeah, I would assume that uh, businesses that are familiar with PPE and sterilization protocols should be the ones that open up first it seems most likely but yeah I, I would you would hope so you would hope so and that's that's actually one of the messages that we keep uh putting out to our patients is that we're not closed because of uh scariness of infection in the dental office we're closed because of ppe preservation for the hospitals um because we want them to know that once we are allowed to be open we're a very safe place to be uh, as a matter of fact, a dental office is probably one of the safest places you can be because, you know, we, we've been that way forever as it is. So Right. Right. You've already been, you've already been using infection control protocols this entire time. So, um, I mean, how has this affected you so far? Your practice, your business-wise, your, your team? Um, what, what, I mean, what's the... What's it looked like the past couple of weeks? What do you think the next couple of weeks look like? That kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's been really hard. Um, one, of the, one of the hardest, saddest days of, of my life um, as a practice owner was on March, was it March 20th or so, right around there. I can't remember the exact date, but I had to tell my team, um, I have 17 team members, I had to tell 15 of them I was going to furlough them. Um, you know, there's a lot of different thoughts on what the, how to manage the practice, what to do with, with team members. Do you, do you keep paying them? Do you not pay them? What do you do? Uh, uh, for us, because we were given that June 15th date, which was going to be about 12 to 13 weeks, I didn't really feel like I had a choice. Uh, if we had been given a three-week window or a four-week window, it would have been totally different. But given a 12 to 13-week window, 
I knew financially for me to have a practice that they had a job to come back to, that that was the only way I could get through it. Um, So it was, I cried when I did it. Um, I, we had a zoom meeting with everybody a week later where we all got together on zoom. I cried again. Um, This is, this is family. Um, It's, you know, we have our family at home, but we spend as much, if not more time here in our practice with, with our team members. And our team's really close. We have an amazing team and, uh, and we all look at each other as family. So that was really, really hard. And it's been really hard for our team not to be together every day. Yeah. Um, there's definitely a lot of loneliness, um, you know, as far as how we, how we just no longer connect. So that's, that, I did that. Um, I kept one front desk person uh, working full time, one clinic person who can also run the lab and things like that. So we could handle any repairs that needed to, that needed to be done, um, uh, work on rescheduling and, and putting people out into June and just kind of slowly putting the pieces together. Uh, as far as financially, um, orthodontics were in a little bit more of a fortunate position than other businesses that we have accounts receivable. Um, my patients have been great. I've only had a couple that have asked to have some deferments, uh, which we're, we're totally open to do and, and we wanted to work for people. Um, we've asked for deferments as a business with some of our lenders. And, um, so I have no problem with the patient calls and asks me if they need to do that. And we just, just tack it onto the end of their contract. Um, yeah. I, I, one of the things that I think is important is don't, just allow them to, to not do a payment for a month or two, but then expect them to come up with three months worth of payments when they come back up. That, 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 that doesn't help people. Yeah. So we just put it on to the end of the payment. It's extended the contract longer. Um, and, and so that's what we've been doing for those that have, that have asked, and we're more than happy to do that. But we've been fortunate. We've had very few that have asked us to do that. So we still have money coming in. Um, we work with OrthoFi, and OrthoFi was great. They actually showed us exactly to the dollar what we could expect to be coming in each month with no new money coming in. And, uh, and so, you know, we, we haven't had any money coming in because we're not starting anybody, uh, but we're, we've been doing virtual consults. Um, so I'm, I'm lining people up to get going as soon as we're able to. Uh, so we've done a number of those. We're doing virtual checks for a lot of our liner patients for bite checks with patients wearing elastics and things. So we're still doing stuff, but, um, that was a long answer. I don't even remember what your original question was. No, but. it's a great answer. <laughs> uh, tell me more about your virtual cons- consults. I would I'd love to hear about that. And I'm sure other people that are viewing would love to know, know as well. Yeah, I mean, there's a, a number of different companies out there that are, that are already up and running and, and really doing a lot with this right now, obviously. Uh, I went with a company called orthoscreening.com. Mm-hmm. Uh, no financial interest, just a, a company that, that I kind of started working with and really liked it and, um, and how they're working with us on making changes that we asked for. Uh, so I, there's a couple different ways that it can happen. We have a, a pop-up window on our website. So anybody that goes on the website, uh, once they've been on the website for five seconds, the window pops up asking if they want to do a virtual consult. So that would be for prospective uh, patients that, that are not ours already. For patients that were supposed to be having an initial uh, new patient consultation during this time that had already scheduled it, I am on that day. We're, we're, we're calling them a few days before until tell them I have an appointment, but on that day, I'm sending them the link. And the reason I'm doing it on the day is I keep up, we're keeping them in the schedule just as a reminder for me so I don't lose track of them. But I'm sending them an email that has a short video from me explaining uh, how to do the process with the link to the, the screening site. And then they will upload pictures and, and give me information. Then I have a way to then get back a report to them. Uh, with the option to then uh, hook up with us with a Zoom meeting uh, if they want to then do a Zoom uh, meeting so they can do a question and answer. And then my TC, who's working from home, will then uh, hook up with them on the finances through Orthofy. For patients that are in treatment that are uh, like what we call recall readies, so kids we've had in recalls or, or kids that are in between first and second phase when it's getting time for their Time to do a consult. We're we're doing the same thing. Um, sending them a, a different email video uh, with this with the link to the site, um, and then for patients that are supposed to be coming in for liner checks, we've been doing the same thing. Um, I don't know if I'll ever do another a liner check in office. Uh, this is such a better feature to do and, and so much more convenient for patients because patients come in for us just to check if their lines are fitting, and we see them for literally 15 seconds in the chair. Yeah, it just seems like a waste of their time 
have them drive in. For us, it's really not a waste of time because it's a five-minute appointment. It's not a big deal. But yeah. it seems like it's not a good use of their personal time. So I don't think we'll ever do uh, aligner checks in the office unless patients want us to. Same with uh, retainer checks. I think we can do those from, from their home as well. So we're going to change our, our kind of our model moving forward because of this, which I think is going to be a positive coming out of it. What do you ask them to submit when you're doing the aligner checks and retainer checks and even the virtual consult? Are you asking them to do their own cheek retraction? Uh, yeah, so we have them do their own cheek retraction. Uh, there's some sites that are asking people to use a spoon. Um, we're not. We're having them use their fingers. Um, within the, the, the orthoscreening.com site, it actually goes through and shows them how to do it, how to do the pictures. And, and in that site is uh, an uploading feature that they do through their phone. So it's actually really easy for them to do. And, and the pictures I've been getting back are amazing. I, I've been kidding my team that I'm getting better pictures at home from the patients. And the patients. <laughs> it's totally not true. I just like to make fun of my team and give them a hard time. Yeah. But the picture's actually been really good. Uh, it's awesome that you actually get some functional usage out of it along the way. So um, and hey, one, adopting, real quick, one, one tip, if you're doing aligner checks, uh, for me, I like to do the liner checks with the liners in so I can see how they're fitting, so I can see if the teeth are tracking or not. Patients don't realize that, though. So when I first started doing this, they were sending me pictures without the liners in. Mm -hmm. And then I had to email them back and say, oh, hey, can you take them with the liners in? So make sure in your instructions that you send to them that you're telling them to take pictures with the liners in. So are you still using uh, Spark then from Ormco? Yeah, yeah, so Spark is our main uh, aligner that we use. Uh, if we have some minor cases, we're using U-Labs in-house that we make them off our 3D printer. That's Those cool. are for just kind of minor movements. Uh, but yeah, Spark is, is, is what I'm using for all new patients. I've been doing that for 16, 16 months now. So I, don't, I only have just a few Invisalign patients left that I'm cleaning up, but everybody else is in Spark, and, it, and it's been awesome. And um, Probably 80% of our patients that are in clear liners uh, use the uh, Propel V Pro vibration oh. device. Uh, and so when we use uh, that, and that, that normally that's really good. Unfortunately, while we're closed, we're getting patients to go through their liners a little too quickly. And yeah. uh, so, so we're actually having them slow down their movements, which um, people are, are they're understanding right now just because we're it's out of our control. Yeah. Um, but what we have found is that patients have said, hey, that, that's totally fine. One thing that they like about the liner is that your teeth don't get sore. So, um, so we still have them use the V-Pro, but just don't change the liners quite as quickly as they were doing. Yeah. Uh, normally with V-Pro, we have them change the liners twice a week. So they go four days and three days. And what we've been doing is having them go to about five or six day changes um, during this time right now. So the thought is, I'm imagining one, I mean, obviously going faster is no benefit because we're trying to reduce visits during our social distancing protocol. But the second, do you, so when you're changing them slower, do you, do you see that you're actually are getting, granted, I know you can see your patients, are they seating better in general when they have less, when they have more time to get the, the aligner to sit with the v no. in place? No, it's the same as it was. So I, I never really struggled much with the two week, or the, the two a week changes with, with fitting issues. Um, I, I, as a matter of fact, I think that I struggle less on patients of using V-Pro than ones that aren't. Um, and I think the reason is that vibration, not only does it do some stuff, you know, biologically, but it, it's an amazing chewy. It really helps the liner seat. Uh, so I think that my patients, even though they're changing faster, the liners actually fit better. That's what I, that's what I found. So I, that's one of the reasons I really try to encourage every patient to, to do the V-Pro. Uh, we just charge what Propel charges us for the device. We don't we don't upcharge it. Uh, I know some practices do, and that's, that's totally fine. Um, we have not upcharged it because we feel it's a, it's a benefit actually for us as a practice. We wind up seeing the patients less time. We get them in and out of treatment faster. Yeah, it's a better experience for the patients. So there, it's a it's a better kind of marketing deal as far as what they're telling other people, telling their friends. So we look at it from that standpoint. I was trying not to make a little bit of money on the device, but make it more money overall by the experience that we deliver. Um, and so since we don't upcharge it, it's not very expensive for them to do. And we really try to encourage every liner patient to do it. Not everybody does because it is an extra expense, but most of them do now. 
Well, on behalf of Propel, I want to say thank you for your business. We really appreciate you recommending it to your patients. Um, I mean, honestly, we really appreciate the business. Uh, so going forward with your aligner patients, then you mentioned that you're thinking about reducing visitation. Does the VPRO give you more confidence that the aligners are now tracking when you're, so when you're doing these virtual consults or virtual aligner checks? Yeah, definitely. I think, again, like I said, even though we're going to be moving through them faster uh, than, than typical with normal one week changes doing the two a week change, the fact that it seems like they're fitting better. I, I think that vibration helps them fit better. I, I think that using that vibration, the teeth are just tracking better. Um, and, and with the teeth not being as sore, I think patients are more apt to wear them um, because they're not taking them out due to sore teeth. Also, patients that are doing an extra financial kind of investment into it, I think are, are more compliant to begin with also. So I think all those things help. So no, I'm not worried about, about about anything at all. As a matter of fact, I would say probably more positive for the VPRO patients that they're going to track well uh, and doing these virtual visits are going to work out great. So, Not specific to VPRO or anything that, for that matter. Uh, I know some people are trying to manage their their bracket patients and they're, you know, they have patients that were about to be debonded or, um, you know, or needed an adjustment or whatever. What, what do you, what are you doing for those patient types? Yeah, that's, that's, that's where the nightmare is coming in. Um, aligner patients are easy. You know, one, you don't have things that are going to break. Um, they can hold in those aligners and, and you don't have to worry about over corrections or, you know, uh, decalcification, things like that. So one of the things that this has really opened my eyes to is, wow, aligners are, are, are really great. Um, and, and I've been doing more and more and more patients with aligners. We did 200 patients with aligners in 2019, which was up from about 80 patients the year before. So we're definitely growing that segment of our, of our patient population. And going through this, what we're going through right now, um, the liner patients are definitely much, much easier to monitor than our racist patients and, and le much less worry that I have for those patients. Yeah, I, uh, I, feel, <laughs> I, I feel terrible for the patient that was so this close to being debonded and all of a sudden this stuff mm -hmm. happens. You're like, oh, yeah, yeah, my yeah. is off. Yeah. Yeah, that's a total bummer for them. Absolutely. So what about in the long term? What do you see? What do you, what's your theory on adult starts and um, going the next six months? that kind of thing do you see more do you think people will come back into your office for new starts quickly or are you prepare are you preparing for the worst i think it's going to be a little bit of a mixed bag um i mean we are going to have around two months of pent-up demand that's going to be ready to get going um one thing that after going through 2008 2009 that we saw was people will still bring their kids in kids they're going to find a way for their kids treatment to happen for the most part Adult treatment, I definitely think we're probably going to see a fall off in adult treatment. One thing you got to remember, though, is not everybody is getting financially impacted by this. Uh, a lot of people are, uh, obviously, but not, not everybody is. As a matter of fact, some people are making more money right now. So it's not going to be quite the same. I think it was in 08, 09, where um, I think it was a little more widespread and uh, across the board. But I'm anticipating adult starts to be down a little bit for the next maybe 12 to 18 months. Um, I don't think it's going to fall off completely, but we'll, we'll probably be down in that. I don't really anticipate that the kids starts being down really. I think we'll probably be pretty steady. I think over a two year period, I think we're going to be pretty solid overall. Um, you know, and so much of it's going to depend on the bounce back in the economy. So um, I, I don't, and I, I don't look at things over a six month or 12 month even. Uh, I try to look at things longer when we go through stuff like this. Um, and I think that our practice was, was positioned very well already as far as just the growth that we had been going through, the, the, the kind of the, the community feel that we have. So I think, yeah, we'll probably have a little bit of a slowdown uh, as things are ramping back up in the economy and, and just in life in general. Uh, sure. I think the second half of this year, we'll probably uh, be pulling back up again. And the next year, uh, maybe not quite the growth we were looking for, but I think we'll probably have a solid year, but over a two year window, I think we should be pretty good. So uh, what do you expect in that? I know we talked a little bit further and I, I'm gonna pin you down a little more because you did mean, you just said you, you don't think super short term, you think long term, which is 
frankly, a good strategy for any business owner, but also makes good sense for an orthodontist who's used to seeing the same patient for two or three years for care. So, um, but to pin you down a little more, I, what I mean is, um, what do you expect the first 30 days to look like once you open your doors? Do you, uh, will your whole team come back? Do you think everybody will rush in your door and you'll be able to turn business as usual? I would like to see what that looks like. Yeah, I think um, the first 30 days is going to be a train wreck. It's going to be brutal. I mean, we have, I mean, just however long we're closed, we have all those patients to try to fit into a schedule that we already had patients in the schedule anyways. So we're planning on, normally we see patients four days a week. We're planning on seeing patients five days a week when we come back. Uh, we're hoping we don't have to do six days a week. Uh, I had uh, about 10 days off in May. I was supposed to go overseas to do some lecturing over in Asia. Yeah. Uh, and that's not going to happen. Uh, so we, we are fortunate there. We had a whole bunch of days that we had to work with. If we're allowed to work in May, we were going to be taking family vacation to Disney World of all places in June. Uh, we were going to be gone for two weeks. Um, that's not happening. Yeah. So there's two weeks there that we were able to fit patients into so we're, we're we're kind of fortunate as far as that goes that we had some some days that we could open back up again to put people in but yeah th those first three days are it's going to be it's really going to be rough and i'm anticipating a lot of broken brackets that we're going to be fixing uh, on top of just the regular appointments uh, when we're back so yeah it's it's all hands on deck and, and i told my team i said you know uh, if you i understand that you, some of you're homeschooling but i mean we got to as best we can, we got to have all hands on deck when, when we are open back up because it's going to be really a hard time. Um, I'm hoping that on, on top of all that, that we have a lot of new start patients that are wanting to get going uh, that had been planning on starting the spring. Uh, I mean, you think about it, we haven't, the kids have been out of school for all this time. This would have been a perfect time to be putting braces on people. Yeah. So this is, I mean, we have like a six month summer um, that we could have been working with. So I'm hoping that. I'm hoping that when we get back with the kids out of school, because we're out of school in Oregon for the rest of the year, uh, they canceled the whole year. Yeah. That's uh, I'm hoping when we get back that, that yeah, we have a, a pent up demand for that too. So I'm anticipating working long, hard hours those first 30 days. Yeah, because uh, I mean, most orthodontic offices seem to be, well, obviously the slowest in the morning. Um, I've never really seen you slow, but I imagine the schedule's a little lighter then. So. Now it basically all day, every day feels like three in the afternoon to five in the afternoon, I presume. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's going to be, we call like the after school time happy hour in our office. And I think we're going to be happy hour right out of the, right from the opening bell. Yeah. There's a lot of patients that are itching to have uh, their adjustments done. So um, a story that keeps popping up in the news lately and whether or not it comes to, comes to be true or not, I don't know. I'm not an epidemiologist, but they mentioned concerns about uh, coronavirus coming back, you know, out coming, various outbreaks later on or once it's receded, people lack social distancing and quarantine protocols, and then we get another swelling of this. Um, is that something that you worry about? And is that something that you prepare for with your practice? And uh, what do you think that any steps, is there any steps that you can in this situation to control your, to control the, the future for yourself? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's definitely, the biggest worry um, throughout the world is okay we've just we've shut the world down here for two months or however long it's going to wind up being I just don't see I don't think we can do that again I think it would just be devastating but what do, what do we do to try to prevent it, it being a swell down the road because yeah this virus is not going anywhere it's it's, it's going to be around um, until we have a vaccine and everything that I've heard and read is it's we're a long ways away from being able to have a vaccine so um, hopefully we have some treatments maybe, and hopefully the government steps up as far as what they're gonna be able to do with testing uh, so that we can kind of help control some of that. In my office, what we're gonna do is, uh, I, I did some reading on what they're doing in South Korea. South Korea nailed this thing right from the get-go. Yeah. Um, and, and they, I mean, they've by, been by far the best, them in Japan. Uh, but what they do at the dental offices in South Korea is there's four steps they're doing that's a little bit different. So the patient is required to show up in a mask. Um, and uh, and I, it'll be interesting, I think maybe our society is gonna be required to wear masks when we open things back up. That might be a requirement, we'll see. And Americans were kind of weird. We can't even get everybody to wear a helmet when they ride a yeah. motorcycle. Um, 
but to come into our place of business, you're gonna be required to come in with a mask. We're going to have parents stay in their cars so that we don't have a, a waiting room full of people. Um, the other thing that uh, Korea is doing, as soon as they walk in, they have a hand, sanitize, hand sanitization station. Mm -hmm. I said that right, but um, anyway, sanitize your hands right when you come in. What you think about it, we probably should have been doing that for years. It, and um, we've always had it up front for people to use if they want to, but now it's going to be required. And that's what we're doing with our repair patients. As soon as they walk in, they got to sanitize their hands. Uh, I ordered one of those laser temperature uh, takers, temperature sure. guide, gauge, whatever you call it. Um, so we're going to be taking everybody's temperature. Um, I don't know how much that really matters, but we're going to be doing that. And then the fourth thing um, that they're doing, and I actually really like this idea, is there's a mouse spray. You can get a betadine mouse spray. And so the patient opens up, just spray it into their mouth, just one squirt, and they swish with it. I have to read the directions. I can't remember if they swallow it or if they spit it out. I think they swallow it, though. I think it's safe to swallow. And apparently it kills 99.9% .9 of bacteria and viruses that are out there. And they've done studies, and this betadine solution kills the COVID-19 virus. Oh, wow. So, so we're going to have everybody do that. Now, is all that just for show, or is it actually going to make a difference? I don't know. Um, if, it's, if all it is for show, though, and it makes people feel comfortable uh, coming into our office, then, then I'll, I'm all for it, even though we're, we're still very safe in what we've always done. But those are the four kind of additional steps that we're going to do that we had not done in the past. Um, and again, just kind of based off of what South Korea did. Well, I remember you also, in, in an attempt to combat this, you actually had somebody come in and sterilize your entire office top to bottom to try and you know, yeah. keep the doors open as long as possible. But I guess the governor yeah. took that decision away from you. I know, yeah, we did that in Shield, and we were open for like three days afterwards. So it yeah. didn't really work out. But we're going to do the Shield again before we open back up. Um, and we'll probably do that once a month moving forward. All right. So pivoting to financial structure, things like that. Have you had any success with SBA loans, government assistance, PPP, or anything like that? So I've been, I've been approved for the PPP uh, program. I uh, got approved last week uh, through my local bank. Um, my understanding is once approved, you're supposed to receive the funds within 10 days. Ideally for us orthodontic and dental offices, it'd be nice if we didn't get the funds until we were able to fully open up. But that, that's unfortunately, that's not the way it works out. So we're going to get the funds right away, apparently. And you have eight weeks then to use that money up for 75% on payroll uh, and benefits for your team, 25% on uh, rent and like interest on, on any equipment loans, things like that, and utilities. So... We're going to bring our team back before we're starting to see patients, and we have a, a, a myriad of different projects that we're going to accomplish. We're going first of all, I'm going to have my teammates are going to write a personal uh, note to every single active patient in our practice, just checking in, just saying, "Hey, just want to check in on you, make sure you're okay. If you need anything, give us a call." So, a handwritten note. So, every patient's going to get one of those. We're going to be doing videos on a lot of different. Um, procedures that we do in the practice. So we're gonna get those out onto YouTube on our web website so that people if they have questions on what a procedure looks like, this is what it looks like. Uh, we're gonna do videos on, on at home things to do for repairs. Uh, if you have a wire break, this is what you do, bracket break, things like that. So these are all, they're all projects that we've always talked about doing and just never had the time to do. Yeah. Um, we're gonna to get together about 30 Instagram posts of, of, of cases that we want to show or ideas that we want to show and we'll have those all ready to go in the can and then every week or so we'll be releasing those we'll have you know pretty close to you know six to eight months worth of those re are all ready to go we're going to get uh, a blog page up and we're going to get a, uh, a monthly blog page we're going to get about 12 blogs written uh, so just all these projects that, that normally you'd want to do that you just don't have time to do we're going to use that time to, to do them and, and get things ready to go so the biggest aspect of this is, is kind of customer service and marketing. Um, and I really want to touch on those things and really hit them home because when we are finally open back up and the economy is going again, I want our practice to be kind of top of mind uh, for everybody. Sounds like a good strategy. I mean, at the very least, you know, keep people occupied. You have some great projects to fill. Maybe there's a door knob or two that needs to be polished, but uh, it sounds like you have a good <laughs> strategy along the way that will set you up for success in the meantime. I know that. 
propel us. We're rethinking about how we do our business structure and how we talk to our customers and what we offer and how we manage our business. And we're very much a face-to-face -face business structure. And as you see, we're evolving and trying to figure out how to do, you know, telecommunications better and, and have a better rapport with our customer base. So I imagine it's a learning structure for everybody, but um, the people that like yourself that take advantage of this opportunity to take a step back, reevaluate, prioritize, improve, I think are the ones that comes back healthier and stronger. And you're, that's a good example that you're offering. So um, one of the, um, have you, one of the few things that people have been doing is just trying to do self-improvement, like, you know, learn a little something. I've been reading more books. I've decided to pick up 3D printing and learn a little more about that. What is it that uh, you have been doing for personal, professional development, anything you recommend for others or other peers? Well, I tell you, it's, um, I don't mind a great example of that. Um, I, uh, as a matter of fact, I think I'm getting fatter as this is happening. <laughs> because, uh, my gym is closed and uh, I can't get into the gym and, and all motivation is gone there. Um, I am but, reading. Uh, personally, uh, the first three days, I think I went to the refrigerator like 10 times a day just out of boredom, right? And I'm like, uh-oh, this is going to yeah. be a problem. Yeah, happy hour starts at about 3.30 now, I think. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yours, yours actually ends? <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, exactly. Um, but I do, normally at nighttime, I'll kind of sit down and watch Sports Center or, or you know, or, or, or a game or something. Obviously, there's no point in watching Sports Center right now. So I am reading a lot more. I've been reading um, kind of some financial books. Uh, it's always been a dream of mine to get my MBA. And uh, I'm not working on getting my MBA right now, but uh, but I am Kind of, kind of reading up on some financial books and uh, kind of trying to learn a little bit more uh, of the financial world and how that how that works. So that's that's the one thing I've done. Um, you know, again, I, I would have to say that the biggest thing that I've been using my time for is with family. Uh, almost every night we are cooking a new recipe. I, I really love to cook, and my boys uh, love yeah. cooking too. Uh, my wife, oh, so she never watches this. My my wife is she doesn't like to cook. Um, so, uh, so we're, we're the cooks in the family and, um, so we've been doing a lot of cooking, trying out new recipes. So that's, that's certainly not self-improvement, but that's, that's kind of the, the thing that we've, that we've been doing. So definitely, I mean, like I said, at the start, family time is actually where I've invested my time, uh, through this, which I don't know of any more greater reward than that. In all honesty, uh, self-improvement, I'm I, like, I tell my wife, I'm already perfect already. How much more improvement can I do? You know? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I have definitely kind of failed in that aspect. I know a lot of people have, and that's awesome, but uh, self-improvement has not been my focus during this, unfortunately. That still sounds like quality time well spent. Uh, I think that your wife definitely appreciates you being an amazing cook along the way. Your family will always appreciate <laughs> that time. So, um, and the, um, okay. So anything that you uh, wanted to share just for fun or whatever that you wanted to just to, put out there into the universe or whatever. This is your final words from the great Dr. Bill Dishinger. I would love to hear if you got anything to share. Yeah, um, this is a really hard time we're going through. And um, it's, it's tough on a lot of levels for a lot of people in a lot of different ways. Um, a lot of people are, are struggling just financially right now just to, just to get through this. Uh, a lot of families are struggling just to put food on the table. But this is gonna pass. And we're going to get pat. We're going to get through this. We're going to get by this. And my hope is that as a country, this brings us together, kind of like how after 9/11 we came together as a country. And my hope is that we that we come together as an orthodontic uh, specialty. I hope that that we're able to to help each other through this. It's one of the great things that I've seen, uh, like an orthopreneur's um, Facebook page. Just all the idea sharing that's been going on uh, of helping each other come up with ideas of creatively what to do while we're going through this, how to get through it, what we're going to do when we come out of it. Uh, my hope is that we continue that. And um, I've always wanted that for our profession. That's, that's why I speak. Uh, that's why I teach because I just, I saw my dad do that and I saw how many people he helped and I just, it inspired me. And, and that's what I've always wanted to do. And, and I'm hoping that coming through this, that we all, kind of feel that way. Um, if you need someone to talk to and, uh, and you're, you're right now or you're lonely 
or depressed or whatever, uh, reach out, uh, reach out to me. Uh, my, my mobile number is 503-710-1489. Um, it would be no greater honor than for someone to call me just reaching out and saying, hey, I need some help. Don't know if I can help you, but it would be my honor to try to help you. Um, so hang in there uh, going through this time. And uh, as orthodox, we're in a fortunate position. We're going to be fine. We're going to get through this. We're going to do, do fine. Residents, you're still going to be entering an amazing profession that, that's, that's there waiting for you. It might be different for a very short period of time, but in the long run, this is still going to be the profession that you chose because you saw how great it is, and it will be great. So that's, that's kind of my thoughts. I just, I'm, I'm a positive thinker. That's just the way I approach life. But I really think that we're going to come out of this uh, better as a world, better as a nation. I think it's, a, it's, it's, it's going to be a lesson learned that, that uh, is going to make us uh, do things differently moving forward in the right way, actually. Um, don't hoard toilet paper, though. My, my wife just texted me. I'm supposed to pick up toilet paper. I don't even know where to go get it. No, That's what I was going to ask you. Is that, what are you doing? You're not counting toilet paper. Yeah. No. No. Well, uh, I very much appreciate your time on behalf of Propel and everybody else that's watching. Thank you so much for sharing your expertise and your knowledge. And um, I hope this is valuable for somebody and at least a couple of people. If we can help along the way, the more the merrier. So uh, I feel good about it. So thank you so much for your time and sharing. Yeah, uh, I look forward to having a, a cold one with you in person sometime. Yeah, in me too. Yeah. Now, thank you. I'm honored and humbled that uh, you would ask me to do this. Thank you. Well, thanks so much for your.